Here we have uh, Colorado Mountain School guide Russell Hunter going to demonstrate us a compression test. So anyway, compression test. It's a small column test. The dimensions of my column are 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And the reason why I isolate it on all sides is so that when we test this, we just test shear. How well does one layer connect with the other one and can it shear? That's what I want to know. So this column is nice and flat and clean on the front. On the sides are all set. I'm going to just cut the back of this column. Does this have to be 30 by 30 for any reason, or is that just what you 30 by 30 because that's the standard. You know, it's the science, and we're trying to compare with other people. That's the standard. Okay. So what I've done is I've cut the back of this block, so now this column is isolated on all three sides. I leave my saw in just to tell me if I get a failure down there, maybe it was the saw and where I cut. Any questions on isolating the column? 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And it's a compression test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shovel and I'm going to use different forces of taps. All together, I'm going to do 30 taps. The first 10 are light. They come just from my wrist. They are light taps. If I get a failure while I'm tapping lightly, what does that tell me about that layer? Yeah, it's a concern. Okay, it didn't take a lot of force to create a failure. And then I go after 10, I go from my elbow and those we call medium. If I get it failing in there, that's a medium result. <coughs> the last 10 in the 20s come from my shoulder and that is called hard. All right, so if I do this test and I get something from my wrist, that's much more of a concern that if I do this test and I get something from my shoulder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. It's helpful to have eyes looking as well. I'm trying to identify where it fails, and it's sometimes very obvious. I'm most concerned about a failure that goes around all three sides. That's nice, crisp, and clean. That's the most concerning. So, Morgan, keep your eye on here. Nathan, keep your eye right here. And uh, Nate, keep your eye over here. All right, so I'm asking people in the pit to help me identify these things. All right, let's give it a whirl. Uh, I gotta stand here, I'm a righty. So what I do is, I'm gonna put my shovel right on the snow. And already I've kind of blown through that first layer. Right, the new snow. So here I go, 10 from the wrist. The important thing is that they're consistent, okay? Mine are maybe going to be different than someone else's, but my 10 are at least consistent. And I saw a little bit of movement in this kind of newer storm snow. Nothing too significant, but there is a little bit of a collapse. I got a little bit of a failure there. So now I'm going to go from the rear, or the, excuse me, the elbow. elbow. Anybody see anything? Started shaking a little bit. Yeah, shaking right a little here. bit, but not, not, no failures. Yeah. Now I'm going to come from my, uh, from my arm, from my shoulder. There it goes. Oh, yeah. So, how many taps did I do? Three. Three in the hard. So, 23 total. So, I would record my results CT, compression test, CTH for hard. Okay, and then I want to now look at where it failed. Could everybody see that it went all the way around on three sides? That's a concern. I, went, I didn't see the failure. Didn't you see it, they point out the crack there, Russell. You so there's a crack it, here. Yep. And then it goes up diagonal. And we won't call it a crack, we'll call it a failure. failure. There was a failure here that came to here and here. And, that that the slope of the... and it all happened in one. So I hit it once, it cracked on all three. We call that a single loading across the column. Did you feel it give that? No, you don't really feel it give. It. Okay. It's more visual and watching it. Got it. That side one basically parallel to the slope? Well, yeah, exactly. So the angle here is the same angle as the slope. And, and now that I'm actually in here looking at it, 
there was something. So now I'm going to try to pull them off. And that doesn't really pull off. It's too soft. Yeah. Okay? But you can see here there was a failure. But this one's more of a concern. And what I'm going to try to do is pull it off. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nice. And you saw the other one fall off. Yeah. But that. that is a concern to me. Yeah. There's different things called shear planes and qualities. I'm not going to get too into that. But this is planar. See how planar that is? Yeah. yeah. And the fact that it went around on all three sides, that's a concern. Y'all see that back at home? <laughs> Gorgeous. See how crisp and clean it is? And then, you know, I could get in here and look at the ID, try to ID the grains in here, and they look like small facets to me. But it definitely looks granular. I mean, exactly, they're angular, granular. So pass that around. This is a slab. Where's the weak layer? Right there. Right here. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah. Was that, did you identify the, by, by poking, I guess, if you were to go back and look over here, Russell, about what height that occurred, or are you going to measure it? Yeah, I'm going to measure. Will you grab me that pole? Cool. That can probe? You, can you tell, before even doing this process, just by, if you were to identify the density Thank of you. the snow, right? <laughs> you want to add their lunch on it? Yeah, well, you do I'm those like, hand harnesses, like right? Inu, I've already it? identified layers. I've given hand harnesses to them, and maybe I suspect something in here. So total, uh, we're still similar. So this is almost that, um, remember we had one layer at 60? Yeah. This is almost at 60. It's at basically 62 right here. So with just a little variability, this could still be that same layer at 60. Good. So that's a compression test. Are there any questions?